Good afternoon, people. Today, I'm going to be working on this beater. This beater is my 2011 Golf. It's a TDI uh, with the six-speed manual. I guess that really doesn't matter because today, I'm putting the second EGT sensor in it, Bank One Sensor One, um, in the last, well, within seven months, this will be the second sensor. So I don't know what is or could be causing the sensors to fail. It's the Bank One Sensor One EGT. Um, it's basically impossible to see it. You can't see it. You have to do it all by feel. And there was not a really good DIY online anywhere. Um, I did it the first time. It didn't, it didn't take me that long or it's really not that hard. Um, figuring out which sensor you need is difficult and I'll show you why in a second. But first, I need to get this thing up on a jack because I do have to lay under it a couple times. Um, and I may have some assistance this time from these two clowns. Hello. I'm going to go get something. And it's something that would help you when you do this, apparently. It would say Volkswagen. But I don't know where it is. Uh, oh wait, it might be that box. Volkswagen, yes! Okay, here it is. You might not be able to see it, that, so I'm going out to show it to you. Here it is. It should say Volkswagen. That's it. 03L906088EJ. So this is your part number here. Um, mine, it's, it's, you gotta look it up by VIN. So I know for a fact that mine is a 03L906088L. Um, and I believe the EJ is just the updated uh, part number. So make sure you do the VIN and you research your VIN, specifically what you need and all that stuff. Um, I did that the first time, so I knew um, what I needed this time and they still have my purchase on file. That's how they, I just got a new sensor. So anyways, here we go. This is for the P0544 engine code on the TDI specifically. I don't know if the gas units have the same codes or the same problems, but this is for a TDI. So um, according to Googling and forums and internet uh, research, this is the Bank One Sensor One um, exhaust gas temperature sensor in the uh, G235 sensor according to the like Ross Tech or uh, VCDS. So it does help to have a VCDS to troubleshoot this because if you're just Googling engine codes, you could have uh, some problems. But I, from going through this the first time, I know that this is the issue. Um, unfortunately, um, I've done this before. Okay, so for the most part, it's a pretty simple job. And I remember correctly, it is right there. So this is supposed to be inside of this bracket, probably vibrated out because this car shakes like a massage chair. So this is the sensor right here. Uh, I'm kind of jiggling it. it. If you follow it, it goes down in here into some of these like hard zip tie things down in there you can see this one's newer than the rest down there and then basically the sensor is way down in here um, and you can't see it the only reason i have to open the all right the only reason i have to jack it up is to um get the uh you have to route the cable down below around some hot pipes so um, I'll try to get this light situated and I'll come back to you all right so first step you're gonna remove your engine cover which is literally just uh, like little pull clip things it's not held on by anything um, other than these little clippy things and I, of course I can't do it with one hand here we go so, so this is the sensor we need to replace it's down here underneath all the junk 
and it's routed through these things that just pry out. Yep, and then down in here, there's like a little, you can't see it, you're not going to be able to see it, but there's a little, um, it's like a metal, I don't know, it feels like a paper clip type of thing, like one of those black clampy things. So there, it goes into that. First things first, under here, I have to remove the little under shield, and uh, it's held on with some Torx. So these are T25s, I've got one up here, Mr. Helper is going to get there and other way. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, as I was saying, if you have a TDI, it's really hard to do it. But apparently, Mr. This Daddy help me and did this. All right, so I've got the two of three that I have left and there's one in the back that we need to go back there and get. God dang it. <laughs> so apparently my dad also got the one back there out. Yeah, so do you, you, you might not believe me, I'm gonna actually go prove it. Oh, I forgot one, I think. Oh. Right here. Oh, he actually forgot one. Okay, so I was wrong. I actually have four on this car. Even though they're supposed to be 37, I've got four left. Oh, wow. There we go. I'm doing the best I can with the light that I have, but there we go. The sensor, we're not gonna be able to get it from the bottom. You have to get it from the top. But I've got a zip tie right here. Um, if you can see my finger up there. Okay, so, um, at this point, I've got the zip tie from down below cut. And the routing I don't think matters too much. There is one place down here where you can tell um, just by feeling that the, the cable goes around a pipe. Um, that's where you need to be sure that you uh, route it intentionally. And uh, if you can see, I'm pulling the cable from way down below just to make sure I've got the right one tugging on the cable. So this sensor you can feel, but you cannot see. I think the special tool is necessary. I don't believe that you can do this without, but I think it's just a regular 17 millimeter, uh, basically socket, but it's designed specifically for like sensors like this. So it has the little you know, slit so that the tube of the sensor can go through it. So the idea is that it goes in like this and then you push this down on it like that and you can move it out, you know, loosen it. You have to basically do that, pick it up, do that, pick it up. But without this, I don't think you could do this. There's no way to get an open-ended on this down low. You might be have some luck with some like a crow's foot or something, but I, I think this is your best move. Um, I don't know exactly what it's called. It's like a sensor socket or something, but that's the part number from, this is the part number from uh, whatever, uh, it might be Snap-on or something, I don't know. I borrowed it from a friend. I'm recording. Recording? Yeah. Okay, so I think the best plan of attack for this is to get the socket down on the, get the socket down on the sensor and then stick your ratchet down there. There's no way that I think you could do this with uh, with just the ratchet like attached to the socket. So I've got a uh, just like a long ratchet, and then I've got like a three inch extension on it. Um, and if, but I mean, if you can get an idea, uh, my hand is just right here. That's how far down your hand needs to be. It's like just past your um, wrist. Okay, so now is a good time, in my opinion, to uh, unplug your sensor from over here. It's uh, underneath all this stuff. I think that's, this is the one right here. So pull this backwards a little bit and it comes out. So from here, I would just note 
how the cable is routed, how it comes out. It's gonna run, like I said, through a couple of those little hard zip ties up here. So obviously don't do this hot and make sure that you keep the um, wire off of it once you've installed the new sensor. And there's a, a clear zip tie point from the factory when you remove it, as well as uh, you can use the same point when you reinstall everything. So the one on the right is the old one, the one on the left is new. Um, yours, if you do this for the first time, the one on your right here, your old one, will be very hard to get out. Uh, it'll be black. Mine doesn't look too bad. Um, the only difference I could tell here is that the left one has a, like a waxy substance inside of it and the one on the right does not. So um, realistically, it's not a hard job. And if I remember correctly, there's actually a part number on here somewhere so you can verify that you've got the right one. No, I don't see it. It just says 978 here at the end. So the, I think the OEM one actually has the part number on it, but this after the, this is also OEM, but it's, um, this is a replacement part. Obviously this is not one from a factory. So, yep, again, this is uh, 03L906088 EJ. So the only thing I have left to say really is just to pay attention to your cable routing out. So that way when you put it back in, it makes your life a little bit easier. Um, I'm not gonna record the reinstallation because again, there's not a whole lot I can record. Um, so I'm just gonna get it put back in, get the car put back on the ground, and then uh, I'll go over what exactly happened with my car. Our helper's gonna show us how to put this back on. You want to move your stool? Yeah. Nope. Make sure it's lined up. Mm -hmm. Look. Up there. That's where the oil goes in. Can you see the... Oh. Yeah. Can you see the problem? Yeah. There you go. Watch your fingers, please. Yeah. Slammer. <laughs> nice. The issue that I was having, um, and this is the, f the same as the first time, but the last time I had it, it was warm out, so I didn't notice the temperature thing so um pretty much the so i started the car and i went to take off out of my neighborhood and it dinged it said uh like vehicle uh what did it say let's see if it does it now it said like vehicle um fault or engine fault and it said workshop now or something like that we'll see if it does that now Okay, of course it's not gonna do it right now because I just put the new sensor in. So it was a glow plug light flashing. So that is the glow plug light. It's the little um, like loop-de-loop -loop thing. I don't even know, it's like a coil. Right? So it heats the something, it's a diesel. So glow plug light was flashing. Then the check engine light came on and it ding. And then it said um, engine fault um, workshop now or something like that. And then uh, instantly it's like limp mode, so no turbo boost at all. And I don't know if if it's actual limp mode or just basically just protecting itself. So um, no turbo boost. And then also I noticed it's not going to do any regens during that period. So I, the first time I have it, I drove for like 250 miles with light on. And it, I read online that it's not doing any regens. So if you still have a DPF, which I do, and you um, have the light on, it's not gonna do a regen. So the issue with that is you could clog up your DPF. Eventually it would like basically catastrophically fail your engine. So um, it's not doing regen. So my point now is uh, in the cold weather, I noticed when, I, when I, dro I drove it to drop my kids off at school. It is so good. And I noticed that um, when I came to a stop, it wasn't even at operating temperature yet, and the school's like 10 minutes away. And when I came to a stop, the, the, the temperature gauge just went down. So I think it might just run the thermostat open the whole time just to prevent any possible damage. So um, at this point, it's done. I've got it, everything reinstalled. I started it just the first time, just the, this was the first start on camera and the light's gone already. So that's a good sign. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, 
put the undershield back on, get it off the jack and drive it until it does a regen. <clears throat> Once it does a regen, I know that it's working fine and the light's gone. So we're good to go.